Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ashland Middle School. It is Tuesday, July 10th, 2018, and today it's the 8 and 2 Ashland post 77 taking on 4 and 8 Hudson, and they are post 100. Ashland has already defeated Hudson once this season. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call, Connor Donovan on camera. And the temperature today is a beautiful, sunny, 89 degree day. And it is perfect conditions for baseball. Let's get right to the Hudson lineup. Leading things off is going to be number 12, Sam Stout, who is the center fielder for Hudson. And batting second is going to be number four, Lance Duraz, who is the shortstop. Batting third is Michael Chavez, who is the right fielder. Johan Asenio, the pitcher, is hitting cleanup, a swing and a miss on the first pitch of the day. Matt Gerard, the catcher, batting sixth. Aaron Cornwell is batting seventh. He is the first baseman, or excuse me, he's batting sixth, as there is another strike. Carter Drummett is batting seventh. He is the left fielder. Wind up and the pitch up high. Batting eighth is Jaden Drummett. He's the third baseman. And Chris Lennox, the second baseman, hitting ninth for Hudson post 100. Larry, how about that Ashland defense after this is hit up the middle? Fielded by Glasper and throw to first, no problem. And they get the first out of the day. For those of you who are scoring at home, number four, Lewis Rossi, number 15, Jackson Hornung at shortstop, number two, Cole Glassburn, number 19, Zach Pesson, left to right, number 20, Jonathan Pesson, number 34, Ben Thomas, number 27, Drew Rancatori, here's a strike. Catching for post 77 is Sean Jewett, pitching number 13, Ben Fink. This is hit high in the air. It is in foul territory and caught by Lewis Rossi for the second out. That'll bring up Michael Chavez, the right fielder. Hudson has lost their last five games as they are looking to get back on the winning side of things. It's been a rough couple of weeks for post 100. Well, let's hope it's six games in a row. Certainly for our Ashland fans, absolutely. I like losing streaks. As Ben Fink delivers, and that's fouled away. Fink looked good in warm-ups. He was throwing a curveball, fastball, and experimenting with a little changeup with Sean Jewett. Yeah, and they had the radar gun out there. They, they were saying he was throwing between 75 and 80. I don't know how accurate those numbers are, but it certainly looked like he had some good velocity on his pitches. As the count is now one and one. Yeah. Ben Fink has only thrown a third of an inning so far this season for post 77. This is his first start here today. And that hit the batter. So a free bag for Chavez with two outs. And that'll bring up the pitcher, Johan Asinio. It's like uh, Johan Santana. <laughs> former well, twins ace excuse me that's Asensio as he steps in and he gives this one a good shot over to right field ranging back and making the catch is Drew Rancatori for the third and final out of the top of the first to the bottom of the inning we go you are tuned in to Ashland Allegiant Baseball and WACA TV in Ashland as well as HCAM in Hopkinton Bottom of the first, coming up, let's take a look at the Ashland post-77 lineup today. Leading off, playing center field, Ben Thomas. Batting second, playing third base, Louis Rossi. Batting third at that shortstop is Jackson Hornung. Drew Rancatori, the right fielder, hitting cleanup. Luke Gustafson, the DH, hitting fifth. Sean Jewett, the catcher, hitting sixth. John Pesson, the left fielder, hitting seventh. Zach Pesson, the first baseman, hitting eighth. Cole Glassburn, the second baseman, Hitting ninth for the eight and two Ashland post 77, who are led, of course, by head coach Derek Johnson. Larry, how about that Hudson post 100 defense? Certainly. Jaden Drummett at third base. That's two M's and two T's if you're scoring at home. Number four, Lance Jorez at short. Number three, Chris Lennox, second base. 21, Aaron Cornwell. 
Left to right, 22, Carter Drummett. He's got to be a relative. Number 12, Sam Stout. Number one in right field, Michael Chaves. Matt Garrard doing the catching tonight for Johan Asensio. Ben Thomas steps in and swings at the first pitch for strike one. I think Ben was waiting for a fastball there. He certainly didn't look too good on that swing. Asensio set to deal. And Thomas hits this one up the middle. It is gloved by the second baseman. Throw to first, no problem. Four to three for out number one. That'll bring up Lewis Rossi, the third baseman. In yesterday's game, Ben Thomas was able to come through big for Ashland post 77, scoring two of the three runs. And he also went two for three at the plate with a couple of stolen bases. Lewis Rossi went one for three. Driving in Ben Thomas in the third inning for the first run of that game as he takes strike one. Third baseman for Hudson playing in on the grass, the cut of the grass. They've got the scouting report for Lou Rossi. Wind up on the pitch. There's strike two. Lewis Rossi hitting a 286 on the Legion season. And he tattoos this one, but it's right to the shortstop. Out number two. That'll bring up Jackson Horning, the shortstop. Late arrival today as he was attending, I believe, the Daily News Banquet, being honored for his great hockey season. I didn't know he played hockey. He did, yeah. He was the star of the clockers. Uh-huh. Takes one low there, 1-0. Jackson Horning hitting a 345 on the Legion season. He's been one of the key contributors offensively for post 77. Of course, a great defensive player as well. Count is now two and oh. He'll be in contention next year for the Tri-Valley League MVP. He certainly will. So far on the Legion season, he's driven in nine, scored 10 runs. So he takes another strike there. Jackson looks down to Jake Obed, the third base coach. He's not going to get any help there other than swing the bat. As Asensio steps off, and now he's set to deal. As this is hit in the air, over towards left field, could be trouble, and that is going to drop just in front of the left fielder as Hornung's going to round first and head over to second, and it's a stand-up double with two outs. That was a sky-high pop-up. There was no man's land. The shortstop went out. The third baseman went out. They abandoned third base, and Asensio had to march over to third base to cover. That'll bring up Drew Rankatori, the right fielder today. A Hopkinton native. Yep. Dom Cavanaugh unable to make it tonight. Asensio deals, that pitch is low, 1-0. Oh. Of course, Hornung always a threat to take off, no matter where he is, pretty much on the base path. Him and Thomas are very, very dangerous. Add Brad Seymour into the mix. There's a trifecta. Asensio looks at second and deals. That pitch is low, 2-0. Oh. Drew looked that pitch in all the way. Asensio winds and deals. Three and oh. Are you give him the take sign here there? I'd say hold your swing. Drew Rankatori hitting a 125 on the season. I'd give him the take. And he will take ball four. And now advancing to third as the ball got by the catcher is Hornung. So Hornung advances on the past ball. And Rankatori draws the walk. So it's runners on the corners with two outs. Luke Gustafson coming to the plate, the DH. They can put a running play on here if uh, Rankatori wants to get caught in a pickle. So if they throw through, Horning will score easily. Gustafson hitting a 167 on the Legion season as he takes strike one there. 
He is one for six at the plate, so has not had many opportunities. Well, he's a far better hitter than that. Checking at first, runner back safe. Hornin is so smart. They, pitcher Asensio went over to pick over. He ran down the line just in case the first baseman dropped the ball. That pitch outside, one and one. Gossifson hit a 286 during the high school season. That was in 42 at bats. So he certainly can hit the ball at times. Runner leading off of first, and he's going to get caught in the pickle, trying to draw the throw. Let's see if it works. A throw over to the first baseman, and the run's going to score. It is going to be 1 0 post 77. The runner still caught in a pickle, heading over to second. The pitcher chasing him down, and he slides into second, but he's tagged out. But post 77 will get the run as Rankatori able to draw the throw over. Jackson Hornung comes around to score. Rankatori caught stealing, but it's one to nothing post 77 as we head to the top of the second on HCAM television in Hopkinton as well as WACA TV in Ashland. Top of the second inning as Hudson will come up to the plate, trailing now one to nothing. Due up are the five, six, and seven hitters: Matt Gerard, the catcher, Aaron Cornwell, the first baseman, Carter Drummond, the left fielder. Face Ben Fink making his first start of the year for post 77. Larry, you got to think if Ben Fink works out in a starting role, that just makes this post 77 pitching staff even deeper. They as can, there's yeah, strike one. They can play or pitch whomever they want depending on the strength of the team they're facing. Save the arms for the really, really top teams. Wind up and the pitch. That one's fouled away, 0 and 2. When you think about it, they already have five proven starters. So now they're trying to see if they'll have six proven starters. I don't know, Owen Ward, we haven't seen him in a while. We have seen Kavanaugh. Saw Shane Leary, of course. Well, part of the reason for that is they did just have about a week off. <laughs> One and two count on Gerard. Line up and the pitch, down low. Of course, John Jewett said he was going to go out there and have a chat with Ben should uh, he get in any trouble. He's not limited by the number of mound visits. Right. And you wonder what the leash will be with Ben if he starts to struggle. Coach Johnson wants to sweep all five games this week. As this is hit high in the air, up the right side, it looks like it is in fair territory and it's caught by Pesson. as Zach Pesson ranges all the way over from first base to make the catch. Zach Pesson, one of the heroes last night on the back end of a double play. And a throw from Jackson Hornung, he pulled a beauty right out of the dirt. That'll bring up Aaron Cornwell, the first baseman. Stocky kid. As the lefty steps in, takes one inside, 1-0. and Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call for Ashland Allegiant Baseball all season long on WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, as well as HCAT in Holliston who will be airing the games. Big Holliston contingent on this post-77 team. Yeah, Holliston uh, representing post-77 more than any other town this season, as well as last season. One I hope we get now. a viewer from the coach of Holliston High. You have to check the Nielsen ratings. <laughs> I know they're up. All right. Well. Ever since we added you to the broadcast, right, they've just exactly. skyrocketed. Stop teasing me. The 2-2 two -two pitch from Fink. And there's a strike. And I guess I was wrong on that count, excuse me. Now it's two and two. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away. I think he threw the change up there. His change up moves down. That's where Sean Jew had wanted it. Red Sox are on a run, hey, Tom? They certainly are. Playing some great baseball. 
Those Fink deals. This is up the middle, just past Fink. Glassburn is going to bobble it, and he will not be able to recover this time. The runner's going to be safe. And that was an awkward play, but I think you got to give him the error there as it was right off his glove on the bounce. As Carter Drummond, the left fielder, will step in. Yeah, well, this field has an unusual feature, which we'll talk about in between innings. Perhaps pass it on to the fans. Runner with a bit of a lead off of first, swing and a miss there. Fink looks in, working from the stretch, looks at first, and now is set to deal. There's strike two. Now Drummond has to get aggressive. Can't just stand there looking. Well, he can stand there looking, but he might go back to the bench. Wind up and the pitch. And there's strike three. Get some swinging, two away. Jaden Drummond will step in, the third baseman. Tall, lanky gent. And that pitch just inside, 1-0. and Not as big a crowd tonight. I would think it would be big with Hudson being so close. That one down low. Nice scoop by John Jewett. Yeah, it could fill in as the evening continues on. Post 77 has shown me a lot this year as far as their defense is concerned. They're winning games with defense. They certainly are, and pitching. Two and one count now. All Shane Leary needed last night was one run because his defense did everything behind him. As this is hit in the air, foul out of play, two and two. Especially those monsters in the middle there, Jackson Hornung and Cole Glassburn were outrageous last night. Yeah, it's almost impossible to get a hit by those guys. As this is hit in the air, and that'll land in the right field, and it's going to be two on with two outs. A single for Drummond. That's the first hit of the game for Hudson, and Chris Lennox will now step in. Well, now Fink can bear down that his no-hitter is gone and take on Chris Lennox, the third, second baseman. Aaron Cornwell reached on the error. Now Jaden Drummond reaches on the single. That pitches ball one. Fink deals. Swing and a miss. Checking at first. Runner just back safe. Good throw up the line by Jewett. It's a catcher's dream as a back pick. Sometimes you can get in trouble with it, though, if it ends up in right field. Swing and a miss. Quite a late swing there by Lennox. One and two count now. Pesson not holding the runner on at first. There's strike three. He gets out of it. And that will retire the side on the top of the second. It's 1-0 post-77 as we head to the bottom of the inning on HCAM in Hopkinton and WACA-TV in Ashland. Bottom of the second inning, due up for post-77, 5, 6, and 7, Luke Gustafson, Sean Jewett, and John Pesson. 1-0 lead for post-77, a nice manufactured run in the bottom of the first, as Jackson Hornung came around to score as Drew Rancatori tried to steal second and drew the throw over. Hornung took advantage of the opportunity as this is hit in the air, over to right center. That's gonna get down for a hit. Past the center fielder, it goes. Gustafson gonna round first and head over to second, and he's going to be safe with the stand-up double. A little misplay there by the center fielder, and Gustafson Gets multiple bases on the hit. We'll have to give it a single and an error. What do you say? I could agree with that. And that'll bring
bring up Sean Jewett, the catcher. We'll have to get the uh, official word on if that's a double or a single and an error. But it was certainly misplayed, so I would probably lean towards the uh, single and error. But as a bit of a post-77 fan myself, we'll give him the double. <laughs> yeah, it was... What I was mentioning to you between innings is I'm sitting down in a chair right near third base, and I'm looking out middle part of the skin of the infield, and that infield skin slopes down to first base. So any gremlins that we've been complaining about over the years. This is hit in the air. Foul territory. Is it catchable? Yes. Aaron Cornwell makes the catch for the out, one away. As slight as the grade is, it may be that the second baseman is having a hard time reading the ball coming towards him. That's not truly scientific. We'll have to ask our cameraman who's a physics major. John Pesson steps in. Asensinio steps off the mound and checks in at second. Does and I not think throw Luke, over. I don't think Lucas is a threat to steal. Asensinio deals. There's a strike. Pesson's got some good pop in his bat. Sencio looks over and delivers upstairs. One and one to John Pesson. That was sort of a rolling curveball. Out of the zone. And now he thought about throwing over, but Kavanaugh, or excuse me, Gustafson back safely. John Pesson, two for 17 at the plate so far this season. Turns away from that one and takes a strike, one and two. John Pesson has the entire right side of the infield. If you notice, the second baseman can only get a few steps over to his right towards first base when the pitcher goes to the plate. Checking at second, runner back safe. And Lucas Gustavus is not a threat to steal. I don't know why Arsenio is uh, wasting his time back there. Zencio deals. And that one inside, two and two. Well, he might not be a threat to steal, but he's certainly playing uh, some mind games with the pitcher. But look, if you look at the 75 feet that uh, Pesson has to work with over on the right side of the infield, I'd shoot it over there. So I'll sit again. That one inside, full count now. One out, one on, four post 77 here in the bottom of the second, already a one nothing lead. Sencio looks over and deals. This is up the middle, and that's going to be gloved by the shortstop. Throw to first, and they will get the hitter. But the runner on second, Luke Gustafson, does advance to third. Six to three on the out. Two away, Zach Pesson will step in to the right-handed batter's box. He's pitching from the full windup, so Gustafson is all the way down the line. He gets a piece of this one. This is driven over to center field and caught by Sam Stout for the final out of the bottom of the second. So no runs come in for post 77 that inning, but they do lead one to nothing as we head to the third on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the third inning, top of the order for Hudson post 100. Sam Stout, the center fielder, Lance draws the shortstop, and Michael Chavez, the right fielder. A 1-0 post-77 lead. Ben Fink out there for another inning of work. That pitch is down low, 1-0. Fink delivers. Another low pitch, 2-0. There's the 2-0. -oh. 
And this is hit in the air over to left field and caught by John Pestid, who played it nicely, one away. I'll bring up Lance Duraz. One of the two lefties on this Hudson team. Line up in the pitch, fouled away. Fink just breezing along tonight, Tom. Certainly is. So far, so good. Runner has reached in both innings, but no harm done as of yet. One and one now on Jaraz. Still very early in the game, however. That pitch down low. Two and one. Bats were really screaming before the break for Ashland. There's a strike, two and two. Well, I think Ben Fink so far has shown you that he certainly has some good stuff, and I think he will be utilized throughout the season on the mound in some fashion. And there's strike three, two away. Gotta love the animation by the home plate umpire. Oh, that, that guy is as crazy as that guy Harrigan from the major leagues who people pay if they know he's umpiring home to watch that guy. Put on a show, I like it. As Chavez steps in, there's a strike. Oh, he's he's out there, he's like, for you. He's having a blast. People that watch baseball in the 60s, Emmett Ashford. There's strike two. <laughs> he's gonna win star of the game. Absolutely. That one inside, one and two. <laughs> Having a good time, making some money. That's what it's all about. Watching some good ball. One, two pitch. And this is lined up the third base side. That's a fair ball. And that is going to be trouble as Chavez rounding first, heading over to second. The throw over to second was pretty close, but Chavez able to reach on the stand-up double with two outs. That'll bring up the pitcher, Johan Asensio. I'm gonna call him Johan if you don't mind. You might actually be right on that. <laughs> I'm right once every game. That one upstairs. That one a little bit low, two and oh. Runner on second, two outs for post 100 here in the top of the third. A one nothing Ashland lead. And this is hit high in the air, over to right center, could be trouble, that's going to get down. And here comes a run for Hudson, it's going to be a one-to-one -one ball game, an RBI double for Johan Asensio. That ball split the gap. Drew Rancatori had no chance, Ben Thomas had no chance. I'll bring up Matt Gerard, the catcher. Sensio getting a very big lead over there. We'll see if Ben Fink takes a look back and sees. There's a strike. Generally, pitchers are good athletes. In the majors, they don't run so much and they don't hit so much, but I'll tell that to Rick Porcello. But that one inside, one and one. And this is up the middle, and that's going to be grabbed by Glasper and throw to first, no problem. Four to three on the out, but post 100 does tie things up as it is a one-to-one -one ball game as we head to the bottom of the third on HCAM and WACA-TV. 
Bottom of the third inning, 9-1 and 2 due up for post 77. Cole Glasper and the second baseman set to step in. Followed by Ben Thomas, the center fielder, and Louis Rossi, the third baseman. A one-to-one -one ball game as we enter the bottom of the third. Sensio deals that one down low, 1-0. Cole is sort of a deceptive number nine hitter. Last night he hit a ball close to the 360-foot mark. Tried to leg out a triple and was beaten by a half a step. So up one. to nothing now. Yep. Cole Glasper had made some great defensive plays in yesterday's win over Natick. And he'll give this ball a ride. And a great dive by the second baseman. A throw over to first, and he got him. Great defensive play by Chris Lennox. Four to three on the out. That'll bring up Ben Thomas, the center fielder. That ball was stung by Cole Glassburn, but he admitted to me before the game that he's really slow. He might not look it, but he's slow. Well, right now, this is the guy you want up at the plate. Ben Thomas leading the team with a 481 batting average, a 583 on base percentage. And 50 stolen bases, right? Yeah, about that. He steals every time he can. The 1-0. There's a strike. <laughs> I love the umpire. <laughs> he really likes the strike calls. He does. I mean, that's There's strike two. Well, Sensio having a pretty good game on the mound so far for Hudson. As Thomas hits this one up the middle, gloved by the second baseman, throw to first, no problem, two away. Two straight four to three ground outs for post 77. Now Lewis Rossi, the third baseman, will step in. Lou Rossi always a threat to steal. Likes to go the other way. Takes that one low. Rossi lined out and is only at bat in this game. Well, they're positioned right out in the outfielder except for the uh, right fielder. There's a strike. A few steps to his, his left, he'll be standing on the foul line. Wind up and the pitch. Another strike there. I think this umpire just ballroom dancing on Friday night, the way he moves. I think so. <laughs> that one's fisted foul. Two and two. I said Seal got into Lou Rossi's kitchen, eh? Sensio set to deal. Fouled away. Lou Rossi, my famous, my favorite player. Good battle going on here between Asensio and Rossi. Wind up and the pitch. And this is up the middle pass Asensio, gloved by the shortstop, throw to first. No problem, they got him, six to three on the ground out. It's one to one as we head to the top of the fourth on HCAM and WACA TV in Ashland. Top of the fourth inning. Due up for Hudson post 100 is six, seven, and eight. Aaron Cornwell, the first baseman, Carter Drummond, the left fielder, and Jaden Drummond, the third baseman to face Ben Fink, who has pitched a pretty good game so far, but we are tied up at one. Fink has given up one run and three hits in his first start of the season for post 77. It's been a good pitcher's duel so far in this one. Wind up and the pitch down low. Do you think it's a coincidence that the Drummond brothers are hitting back to back along with the Pesson brothers hitting back to back? Yes. This is hit high in the air, left side, and it's going to drop, but it's foul. One and one. A little bit of 
bit of clouds moving in. Storms expected late tonight, but the weather throughout today has been perfect for baseball. Certainly a little more humid than last night. I think uh, Coach Johnson just having some words with Sean Jewett. Jake Obid po positioning the outfielders. Wind up in the pitch. And this is a fair ball up the middle. Glove by Fink to flip to first, no problem. One to three, one away. Dakota Drummond, the left fielder, will step in. The umpire asking for some more eggs. He needs a couple more eggs to continue the game. That is fouled away. Since they did some pruning down here before the uh, spring, there's a strike. They haven't lost as many baseballs this year. Yeah, they certainly needed to do uh, some pruning back there. As this is hit high in the air out of play, it's starting to interfere with the warm-up area for the pitchers. And they cut down all those trees, so now it's a nice clear warm-up area. That's fouled away. Nice break and pitch. Drummond got a piece of himself there, I believe. Nope, he's all right. We are going to have warm-up action for post 77. Owen Ward. Threw a no-hitter earlier in the year. Rain shortened game. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. Strike three, two away. I'll bring up Jaden Drum at the third baseman. With Fink only throwing one third of an inning so far this year, maybe Coach Johnson figures he's ridden him pretty good. One and no count. Certainly, if you can get him through uh, four innings, that's pretty impressive. And who knows? He might even come out there for the fifth the way he's going. 2-0 count now. There's a strike, 2-1. and one. Jaden Drummett singled and is only at bat back in the second inning. Takes that one low. 3-1. and one. Fink would like a clean inning here, and I would like to see uh, Drummett get called out looking so I can see the umpire. Time called by Drummond. This is hit in the air, foul territory, and that is going to land out of play. Good hustle by Pesson. Certainly was. I would have let that ball go myself. I think he was worried about uh, the fan over there on the uh, blanket. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see her now. I think she's getting a tan, not paying much attention to the game. She didn't move at all. Full count now on Drummit. Fink would love a punch out right now, and so would I. And that one's low. He draws the walk. That'll bring up Chris Lennox. Second baseman stepping in. He struck out and is only at bat back in the second inning. Swing and a miss. 0 and 1. Lennox is the nine hitter. Checking out first, runner back safe. Or maybe he's the eight hitter. Nine hitter. Nine hitter. Stout's on deck. 
That's fouled away. 0 and 2. Runner with a lead off of first, the 0 2 pitch. Fouled back. Count remains 0 and 2. I was Dominic Cavanaugh warming up. Owen Ward doing the catching for him. There's strike three. And that is out number three for the top of the fourth. And what a great third strike call by the home plate umpire. It's a one-to-one -one ball game as we head to the bottom of the fourth on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the fourth inning, Jackson Horning, the third hitter in the lineup, stepping in for post 77, three, four, and five do up. Jackson Horning, Drew Rankatori, and Luke Gustafson. As Johan Asensio deals, there's a strike. Oops, I think it was a ball. We'll have to I check. I think he might have been right. He kind of sticks his hand to the side when he calls a ball, which is unusual. 2-0. and oh. He's working hard. He's working hard, that home plate umpire. Certainly is. Most entertaining umpire I've ever seen. <laughs> Sensio deals. There's a strike. Two and one. It's the cha-cha. That's the move. It's the cha-cha he does behind <laughs> the The cha-cha strike call. Yeah. Leg lift and the pitch. There's another cha-cha strike call, two and two. What do they call those things on the bottom of tap shoes? Clickers or something? This is hit high in the air over to right field, but placed nicely is Michael Chavez for the catch, one away. That'll bring up Drew Rankatori, the right fielder. He walked and is only at bat this game back in the first inning. Actually, we're going to have uh, Dom Cavanaugh step in, it looks like. So Rankatori out of the game. Dom Cavanaugh has arrived and is in the game and fouls that one away. Rumor has it Dom Cavanaugh got stuck in a very, very long line at a drive-through. That pitch down low, one and one. How true that is, but. Wind up in the pitch. Gets a piece of this one, driven over to right field, and it is caught. What a catch by Chavez, just able to hang on. Two away. I'll bring up Luke Gustafson, the designated hitter. He got on base the last time. That was just about to fall out of his glove, and he was just able to hang on. Really didn't get a great jump. But he made it to third. Gets a piece of this one, fouled away, 0-1. Lots of players are chuckling a little bit. The one of the reserves was had his back to the play and foul ball almost hit it in the coconut. There's a swing and strike. Oh and two. Line up and the pitch. Down low. One and two count. On Gustafson, he doubled in the second inning. Did not turn into anything, however. Post 77 scored their only run back in the first inning. That's a sign of a good catcher right there. Nobody on. Still out there blocking balls. Two and two count on Gustafson. Sensio shakes off the first sign, now deals, and that's fouled. Spoiled that one off, Lucas Gustafson did. 
Still out in front of that curveball. Another 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. There's strike three and out number three for the bottom of the fourth. We head on to the top of the fifth. It's post 77-1, Hudson post 101. You are tuned in to Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM Television in Hopkinton as well as WACA TV in Ashland. Top of the fifth inning, top of the order for Hudson post 100. Sam Stout, the center fielder, stepping in. Ben Fink out there for his fifth inning of work. He's pitched a great game so far, especially for his first start. The bunt is going to be strike one. Lance draws the shortstop, and Michael Chavez, the right fielder, do up next for Hudson. Why didn't you tell me I lost my hat there, Tom? I didn't notice. Well. Line up and the pitch. And this is up the middle. Glassburn gets it, bobbles it, picks it up, throw to first, and it is not in time. Runner safe. And that was an error there by Glassburn. Second one of the game. I'll still blame it on that infield. It's terrible. It is, but that ball was hit right at him. As draws will step in. But that infield dirt certainly does play uh, mind games with you. So runner on, no outs for Hudson. Bunt up the middle, trying to push the runner to second. He'll throw to first for one. So the job is done by Lance Giraz to get Sam Stout in the scoring position. One away, and that'll bring up Michael Chavez, the right fielder. Well, Hudson senses that this could be a 2-1 kind of game, so they're just trying to get that go-ahead run. Definition of small ball right there. Yep. Sometimes when you can't get the offense going, that's the best alternative. Decent inside move by Fink. And this is up the third base side, and that is going to be foul. That's emphatically foul. Oh, and one on Chavez. Yeah, this, the Chaves family in Hudson have a very, very large population of Chaveses. Very much like the Silva family down in New Bedford. Fink looks at second and deals. One and one. Cole Glassburn holding the runner close to second. Time called by the hitter. The idea for the second baseman is to get as close to second as he can and then make a dash to try and get as close to his fielding position as he can. Here's the 1-1. One, one. And this is driven into center field and caught by Ben Thomas. And that is going to be the second out. Sam Stout stays over at second base. And that'll bring up Johan Asensio, the pitcher. He was one for two at the plate. He had the RBI double in the third to tie up the game to drive in Chavez. They're playing him to pull. That one down low, runner's gonna take off for third and he'll have the advance on the wild pitch. John Jewell will have to put that in his back pocket. Ball was in the dirt, so it was a decent block, but he pushed it up the first baseline. Sensio has a chance to help himself again. Two and oh. There's a strike, two and one. Just 
popped out getting a very good lead down at third base. Two and two now. He threw the change up there that was in the dirt. Sensio squared his last hit up pretty well. 2-2 two -two pitch. And this is hit in the air up the right side, but foul. Sensio could certainly power the ball. Good athlete. He can run. Uh, that wasn't a good idea there. It's okay, tire out Asensio chasing a errant throw from the outfield. That was not the game ball. Fink from the stretch, looks at third, and deals. And this is up the middle, back to Fink, and he'll run it over, flip it over to first, no problem. One to three for the third out of the inning. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth. It's Hudson one, Ashland one. You are tuned into Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the fifth inning. Six, seven, and eight due up for post 77. Sean Jewett, the catcher, stepping in. Sensio set to deliver. There's a strike. It's been a very well-pitched game on both sides by Johan Asensio and Ben Fink. And the home plate umpire. <laughs> Line up in the pitch, upstairs, one and one. We'll have to find out from Sean Jewett what it was like to uh, stand in front of the home plate umpire all night. They have a nice conversation. Upstairs, two and one. That was a breaking ball that didn't break. Well, Larry, you think uh, Ben Fink will be back out there for the sixth? No warm-up activity here. And this is hit high in the air over to right field, and it's caught. One away. We'll bring up John Pesson, the left fielder. And Zach Pesson right behind him. John Pesson 0 for 1 so far today. Takes a strike. Upstairs. John's going to miss his brother Zach when he heads out to UMass Amherst. Most of those boys are going through their orientation week. But Brad Seymour isn't here. 1-1. One, one. And this is driven over to center field, and that's going to get down for a base hit. John Pesson coming around first base, heading over to second. He might try for a three. The throw in is going to get by the cutoff man. He slides into third safely, and it's a triple for John Pesson. Most exciting play in baseball is the three-bagger. That ball was hit deep over to that right center field area. Zach Pesson coming up to the plate now as Matt Gerard, the Hudson catcher, will have some words of encouragement for Asensio. Coach Johnson got a hold of uh, John Pesson yeah, you see. last time up. He said, back up in the box. Don't change anything you're doing. Just back up about a half an inch. It looks like it paid off. Yeah, it paid off. There's a strike. Oh, and one. See if Zach can drive his brother in. Show some brotherly love. That is fouled away, 0 oh and two. Runner on third, one out. Hudson's playing the infield in. They were going to try to cut the run off at the plate. Anything hit on the ground. Hopefully Pesson can shoot it through. 
And this is up the third base side. Glove by the third baseman to throw home. They have the runner in a pickle. John Pessa now trying to score once again to throw over to the pitcher, and he loses his step, and he is going to be tagged out. A nice defensive play by Hudson. Two away as Pessin, Zach Pessin will reach on the fielder's choice there. He stayed in the run down long enough to get his brother to second base. Right. Cole Glassburn will step in. Two outs, one on, runner on second. See if he can atone for a couple of miscues in the infield, which I still blame on the uneven skin there. Got good power. That one outside. Draw it popped up like he wanted to throw down a second base, but there were no fielders ready. Swing and a miss, one and one. Didn't get cheated on that swing. Cole Glassburn grounded out and is only at bat in the third inning. Upstairs. Cole was hitting bombs in batting practice today because I got down here, you know, an hour early. But batting practice and live game are two different things. Gets a piece of this one, hit high in the air, over to right center, and it is going to be caught by Sam Stout, who is able to range to his left to get under it and make the catch for the third and final out of the bottom of the fifth to the top of the sixth we go. It's Hudson 1, it's Ashland 1, it's Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM and WACA-TV. Connor. Connor. Top of the sixth inning, due up for Hudson. It's five, six, and seven. As Matt Gerard, the catcher, steps in to face Ben Fink, still in the game for a sixth inning of work. As this is driven up the left side, and that is going to land fair. Rounding first is Gerard, heading over to second, and that is going to be a ground rule double. So a leadoff double for Gerard. No, actually, did they change that? Oh, okay, he's just throwing the uh, his glove over. So leadoff double for Gerard, and now Aaron Cornwell, the first baseman, will step in. And warm up action once again for post seventy seven. Owen Ward this time. Check it at second, and runner back just safe. Jackson Horning almost, almost had him. I don't know whether Sean Jewett called for that, but Ben Thomas was not charging in just in case there was a miscue. Gerard would have ran all the way home. Wind up in a pitch. And this is hit in the air up the left side, and it is foul. Oh, and one. Bank awaits the sign and now is set to deal. Up the middle, Glassburn gets the glove on it, throw to first, they get the out, but the lead runner advances the third. Hudson certainly not playing like a four and seven team. Carter Drummond, the left fielder, will step in. Hudson four and eight on the season. They've lost their last five. They were four and three at one point. They are trying to get back on the winning path here. 
A one-to-one -one ball game, but Hudson threatening here in the top of the sixth. There's a strike. Runner on third, one out. That one inside, one and one. Outfielders playing very, very deep for Drummond. His brother waiting on deck. And this is up the third base side. That's going to get through. And Hudson post 100 has a two to one lead. An RBI single for Carter Drummond. That would have had to be a spectacular play by Lewis Rossi. He's a little upset with himself, but that ball was scalded. Yeah, that was tattooed up the line. I'll bring up Jaden Drummond, the third baseman. So Lou likes to think he can get everything. Well, I'd say that's the right mentality to have. That's why he's my favorite player. <laughs> Runner with a lead off of first. There's a strike. First lead of the game for Hudson. That one inside, one and one. Ashland scored a run in the first inning. Hudson responded in the top of the third and now has added one here in the top of the six. It's a two to one Hudson lead. That one down low, two and one. Bank looks over at first and now is set to deliver. And this is up the third base side. Glove by Rossi. Throw to second for one. It's dropped and everyone's safe. A rough defensive situation there. He it's... called him out. Well, he called him out. So I guess Glasper must have just held on to the ball long enough. And then as he tried to exchange it to his throwing hand to throw over to first. That's where he dropped it. So they're calling the runner at second out, two away. So they get one at least. I don't know about that call. <laughs> I'll take it, I'll take it. This is hit in the air over to left center and that'll drop just in front of Ben Thomas. And that'll be another base hit. Runner on second, or excuse me, uh, Drummond advances to second. Chris Lennox aboard with the single. Two on, two outs. Sam Stout to the plate. Coach Johnson is taking. Coach Johnson is taking one step towards the mound and one step back. He's going through in his mind with the leadoff hitter here. Well, you'd have to imagine at the very least this is Fink's last inning. But regardless of what happens here, I'd say he pitched a heck of a game. As that is fouled away, 0-1. Stout had his sand wedge out for that one. Coach Johnson going to take a trip to the mound either to talk or to take. It's very possible he might take the baseball here. Middle of the count is, usual, is a little unusual. Yeah, I don't think he would, but Fink has thrown a good amount of pitches in the last two or three innings, but he is going to leave him in. I think he was just checking on him, giving him a little breather. A little encouragement from the rest of the infield. Sam Stout will step back in and face an 0-1 count. Outfield still playing deep. Stout calls time, and the runner saying the pitcher balked, but there was time called, so he's going to be sent back to second base. Sort of confusing for a pitcher. Somebody's yelling, "Step off! Step off!" while the runner's heading there, and time was a uh, time was called. Maybe the runner wasn't aware of that. 
And this is up the middle, and excuse me, up the right side, gloved by the first baseman. He'll step on the bag and get the final out, a three unassisted ground out by Sam Stout, but Hudson does play to run, and they lead it two to one as we head to the bottom of the six on HCAM and WACA-TV. Bottom of the sixth inning, post 77 down to their final six outs, but it is top of the order. Ben Thomas at the plate, and the lefty takes a strike, 0-1. Well, ben Fink so far has pitched six innings, giving up six hits, two runs. Both were earned, a walk and five strikeouts. It's been a terrific outing for Fink. It's unlikely we'll see him in the seventh, but certainly a great first start of the season. Sam Stout is playing a little shallow in center field. That is peril. Thomas has got power to all fields. A 1-1 one, one pitch. Umpires just climbed the ladder with his hand there, notifying the pitcher it's too high. Two and one is the count. I do get a little confused by the hand motion sometimes. As this is hit high in the air, over to shallow left center, and it's caught as Carter Drummond's able to come in and make the catch. One away. Ashland down to their final five outs as Lewis Rossi will step in. He's got nothing to atone for but I'm sure he's thinking about that ground ball that went by him. Johan Asensio has pitched quite a game so far for post 100. That one outside, 1-0. Oh. Well, as a pitcher, you might like this umpire. He's letting you know where you're missing. That is very true. There's another outside one, two and oh. That was obvious. He's showing them inside, outside. And just if it's a little high or a little low. 2 0 pitch. Three and oh. Jackson Horning do up next. Big opportunity here for post 77. And that one is low, and it's a four-pitch walk to Lewis Rossi. Jackson Horning will step in. He's one for two today. He doubled in the second inning and then scored the only run of the game for post-77. Gerard shows a good arm behind the plate, but Coach Johnson is notorious for his aggressive base running. We'll see what happens here with his number three hitter. I think you have to hold here and see what Horning can do. Checking at first, Rossi back safe. Especially with after a walk on four pitches, Sensio could be losing it. It's all right by me. <laughs> He's throwing a good amount of pitches in some of these innings to get out of some of these battles. There's a strike. Hornig didn't like that one. He's going to take a little walk for himself. I didn't like it either. I thought it was low. Well, one and one count. But this home plate umpire has been doing a great job, so. They are playing really, really deep for Jackson, as they should. That one outside, two and one. I think Jackson plays some club ball. Like the Roughnecks or Nakona or one of those teams. Rossi with a bit of the lead off of first as Horning drives this. Over to center field, and it is going to be caught by Stout. Rossi stays put at first, two away. Dom Cavanaugh's first plate appearance. No, this will be his second plate appearance. No, that's right, it's the second plate appearance. He flew out and is only at bat. I remember that. Rossi with a bit of a lead. Off of first, that one outside, and then a glare towards first by the catcher, Matt Gerard. Well, this will be a huge momentum shift for Hudson if they're able to pull this one off. It'll be their first win in s their last six games. Asensio's doing a good job of holding runners. That's in the dirt. That one's low, two and oh. 
It'll also keep them alive in playoff contention. They certainly need to do a whole lot of winning, though, if they want to make the postseason. Got to be in that top four. And this is up the right side foul. Ooh. Danger zone for the first base coach. Coach Obed, the third base coach, was telling Lewis Rossi to get a bigger secondary lead. So if the ball went in the dirt, there was a little bobble he could take off and run. Little lead off of first by Rossi, the 2-1. Swing and a miss. Two good, and two. Good curve ball by Arsenio. A two to one lead for Hudson. That pitch down low, it's now a full count. One on, two outs, four post 77 here in this bottom of the sixth. Louis Rossi, as soon as he makes a move, a pitcher makes a move to the plate, he'll be taking off. So he will score on a double. Sensio set to deliver. And that is high and inside. Cavanaugh draws the walk. Second walk of the inning for Asensio. Two on, two outs, Luke Gustafson to the plate. Gustafson a wide body. Third baseman playing even with the bag. Gustafson was only one for six at the plate coming into this game. But he's done a whole lot of pitching for post 77 so far this season. A whole lot of terrific pitching. But he can certainly hit the ball. Asensio didn't like the pitch selection. He stepped off the back of the rubber. There's a strike, 0-1. Went with the breaking pitch there on Gustafson. Sancio set to deliver. Swing and a miss, 0-2. Went for a little bit extra, Sancio. Rossi's bothering him a little bit, getting a big lead. Takes a look at second and delivers. Upstairs. One and two. If Gustafson reaches, Sean Jewett would be up next. Two on, two outs, four post 77. They trail two to one. That one low, good block by the catcher, Matt Gerard. Lou Rossi thought about it, took one step towards third. Thought better of it. I don't think uh, with how hard runs have been to come by in the last couple days that you're going to be too aggressive here on the base paths. You don't want to run into the third out and meet the scoring of your manager. Swing and a miss. And Sensio gets out of the inning very impressively. And we will head to the top of the seventh. Hudson leading Ashland 2-1 to one on WACA-TV and HCAM. Top of the seventh inning, guess what? Ben Fink is back out there to work this seventh inning. It's a two to one Hudson lead, but I'm sure the first sign of trouble, we will see a new pitcher. But for now, Coach Johnson going to leave Fink out there. Two up for Hudson, it's two, three, and four. Lance Duraz, the shortstop, stepping in. Michael Chavez, the right fielder, and Johan Asensio, the pitcher. Dangerous part of the lineup for post 100. Hudson's got some warm up activity. Clouds have really obscured the sun now, yes, so sir. it's a little dim. They certainly have. That one's fouled away. Storms are expected later on tonight. But the week looks pretty clear for Ashland Legion Baseball. 
Hopefully it'll stay that way. Pitch down low. Fink hasn't lost anything on his fastball since the first inning. The 1-1. One, one. And this is driven over to center field. And what a catch by Ben Thomas, ranging away to his left to haul it in one away. Did his best JBJ imitation out there. He was right on top of that. Michael Chavez will step in, the right fielder. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Well, I think it's pretty clear that Coach Johnson has a lot of confidence in Ben Fink sending him out there for the seventh. 1 and 1. And Ben has certainly uh, shown that he's earned that confidence with the way he's pitched today. And this is up the left side, gloved by the third baseman Rossi. Throw to first, no problem, two away. Chaves has decent speed. Louis Rossi fielded that one. He got a nice big hop. Sensio will step in. Strike one. Wind up and the pitch. And he gets a piece of this one. That's going to drop in for a base hit into right field, a two out single. And Johan Asensio, two for four at the plate today. He's having himself a day on the mound and at the plate. And now Matt Gerard, the catcher, will step in. From a pitching mechanic standpoint, Fink gets way down the, the mound with his lead foot. It gives him some extra power. And this is hit high in the air up the right side. It is in catchable territory. And that'll be the third out as Zach Peston able to range over and retire the side. We will head to the bottom of the seventh. Post 77 is down to their last three outs, trailing two to one on HKM and WACA TV. Bottom of the seventh inning, Sean Jewett, the catcher, stepping in, the six hitter. In the post 77 lineup, Jewett, Pesson, and Pesson do up. Wind up and the pitch. And that one's fouled away, 0 and 1. Good cut by Sean Jewett. Johan Asensio out there to try to finish off the complete game. He's been impressive. Coach Johnson will do anything short of a crime to win this game. And there's a strike, 0 and 2. Line up and the pitch. That one low, one and two. Umpire's gonna give the catcher a little courtesy. He took that one uh, maybe below the belt. That's a reciprocal thing. If the umpire gets hit, the catcher gives him time. There's the one, one. Down low. Excuse me, that was the one two, and now it's two and two. I'm sure, Sean Jewett thought he might have been uh, rung up there. That one outside, full count. Any way he can get on. Certainly a bit darker out there than when we started this game. Oh, very much so. It's scary. Ronan, Ronan Bates is uh, swinging a bat behind the bench. That one's inside, and that is going to put one on with no outs. Four post 77 here in the bottom of the seventh. John Pesson will step in. The left fielder, he's one for two today, tripled in the fifth. Well... I don't know whether you can pinch run and reinsert, but Sean Jewett isn't the fastest, but he isn't the slowest either. That went up high, 1-0. Oh. Well, as, as Incenio did have some troubles 
in the sixth with his control, walked a couple hitters. So we'll see if he's able to get through this inning. He's maybe getting a little tight for the right-hander. That one outside. Two and O. Oh. He's throwing several balls in a row. Runner with a lead off of first. There's a strike, two and one. Sean Jouette over at first after a walk. No outs in the inning for post 77. A 2-1 game. Ashland down to their final three outs, but tying run on base. Three and one now on Pesson. The noose is starting to get a little bit tighter. I've been there back in the day. Things get a little bit tight. There's a strike, full count. Well, it appears it's gonna be an exciting ending, nonetheless. Full count pitch. Swing and he stays alive, got a piece of it. Just. Just by a feather. A little Nick. Nick's a good, Nick's a good. Stays alive. We'll have another full count pitch. A sense you try to get him with the breaking pitch. Good piece of hitting up there by Pesson with his brother waiting behind. Sensio set to deal. That one up high, and that's a walk. Two on, no outs. <coughs> I'm not going to use the C word, but it's a little too early for that. Way too early for that, as Zach Pesson will step in. After a mound visit. And we're going to have a mound visit. Will we have a pitching change? How you feeling, Johan? Well, I'm feeling pretty good. You sure? Yep. Yeah, I'm sure. We're going to have a pitching change, and I'd say that's the right call there by Hudson. So, Johan Sensio pitched a terrific game for Hudson, but he will come out after six plus innings of work. There's two on, no outs, four post 77, and we'll take a timeout on HCAM and WACA TV in Ashland, and now also HCAT in Holliston. Continuing on with the bottom of the seventh inning. Two on, no outs, four post 77. A new pitcher for Hudson. Aaron Cornwell moves over from first base to take over on the mound. And Johan Asensio, the new first baseman. Asensio went six plus innings, giving up three hits, one run, but is still on the books for the two on base. Looks like Ronan Bates is gonna enter the game. As this is hit high in the air, and that is going to Be an in signal fly. the infield fly yeah. rule, one away. Oh, geez. Cole Glassburn due to step in. Two on, one out. Tying run at second base. Hudson trying to snap a five game losing streak. Cornwell's got a little zip on his fastball. Upstairs. He doesn't want to get behind. The 1-0 pitch. And there's strike one. One and one. Cole Glassburn could be a hero here. Set to deliver. And this is up the middle, gloved by the second baseman, throw to second for one to throw to first. And it's a double play. A 4-6-3 double play, and that will be it. Hudson, post 100, will snap a five-game losing streak. 
and take the two to one victory. What an ending to this game. Certainly a tough loss for post 77 and not the result they were looking for. Ashland scores one run on three hits and commits three errors while Hudson scores two runs on seven hits and commits one error. A great win for post 100 as they now improve to five and eight on the season. Post 77 falls to eight and three, but on the plus side, a great pitching performance by Ben Fink. And I think now you certainly know that you have a reliable starter in Ben Fink. The player of the game will give it to Johan Asensio as he was able to go six plus innings on the mound and had a great pitching performance and also went two for four at the plate and drove in a run in the third inning. The final score for the final time, Hudson Post 100 defeats Ashland Post 77 by a final score of two to one. For Connor Donovan on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. This has been a presentation of Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM Television in Hopkinton, WACA TV in Ashland, and now HCAT TV in Holliston. We thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Good night, everybody.